hand tools, and cookware. Things you need to know when you get into the kitchen. Okay, the first one is vegetable peeler, pretty self-explanatory. You're going to use that to peel potatoes and carrots, as the chef directs you to do. Uh, they are designed to have blades on both sides, so you can go up and down quickly uh, to, to complete the task. Uh, fruit cores, apple cores. This one right here is used primarily for pineapples and that kind of big fruit. This one's used for apples. Very effective if you have to do a lot. Let's say you're doing 20 apple pies. This can You can fire through the apples really quickly using that. Uh, tomato shark. This little round thing right here takes that brown spot out where the tomato is connected to the plant itself. Uh, you definitely don't want to have that in, in your salad or your food. Cutting boards. Back in the day when I was young, um, we used uh, wood almost all the time, almost every place I worked. And they were usually thick and we usually would soak them in uh, bleach water at the end of the day and make sure there was no uh, microorganisms. This day and age, plastic is uh, the, the bigger thing that's used. Uh, color coded so you can um, use them for specific things. So, you know, the red is going to only be for meats and the white's going to only be for dairy and the green's going to only be for vegetables. Um, don't know why it's skipping ahead, but next one is butter curler. Um, not really used quite a bit in this day and age. Um, the blade is shaped like this. The butter needs to be chilled. And you basically, and what you do is you drag this across the butter and it makes these nice little curls. Great presentation. Egg slicers. Uh, this one's going to cut it into, uh, into to slices and this one's going to cut it into wedges. Uh, really difficult if you try to cut with a knife. A lot of times it mushes it out. Uh, pizza cutters, two different kinds, the round one that rolls across and then the flat one, big blade, and you just kind of rock the blade across. Big, the big blade is great for uh, personal pizzas. This is kind of a small one. The round one's great for the big ones. <clears throat> Zester, the handheld one is great if you want to use it for garnish. They come out nice and long and they, they come out great. The uh, greater one is, uh, it'll get the flavor. And if you're just looking to get the flavor, that's fantastic. But you're not going to get such a great presentation. And if you're going to grate them, you can also use the box grater, which is coming up in a few minutes. Uh, melon baller. Um, you put this, the, 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 there's different sizes. And you essentially, what you do is you put the, the melon baller in flat and you curve it around. So you end up with balls of fruit that look beautiful for presentation. Uh, whisks, chef. I will always say it's not a it's not a whip. It's a whisk. What you do with it is whip. Uh, the ones that are rounded on the end, uh, those are the balloon whips, and those are used for the light, airy things. And the ones that are straight, the wires are usually thicker and it's more firm. And you're going to use that for something that's a lot a lot more uh, thick, like a sauce or a soup. Um, kitchen spoons. All right, so you have slotted ones, you have solid ones, you need perforated ones. I've been known to purchase all the slotted ones short, the solid ones medium, and the perforated ones long. So when I'm in the kitchen and they're all in a, in a, in a, in a bucket on the hotline, I don't have to look, pull every one of them out to find out which one I want. Slotted ones and, and the uh, perforated ones are best to use for pulling things out of liquid when you want to pull out the food but leave the liquid in there. And a solid one is great for stirring and serving. Uh, palette knife. Palette knife is usually used uh, for decorating cakes, scraping down bowls, but mostly for decorating cakes. It's a long uh, blade and it's very flexible. Uh, great for cakes, like I said. Uh, rubber scrapers or rubber spatulas uh, used in the bake shop primarily. Wonderful for folding in egg whites into, um, into uh, a mixture. Uh, a lot of them have a scooped edge, so it's a little bit like a spoon, and a lot of them have this this uh, gouge out of it. That's for the, for the edge of the bowl. Uh, offset spatulas. So if you have a thin one like this, you're going to use it primarily for small items, thin items that are delicate, such as um, you know salmon fillet or trout fillet. And then the bigger one used for pancakes or uh, hamburgers, offset spatula. Uh, carving forks. Uh, back in the day, um, they really did not have tongs. They weren't a thing yet. So the chefs used to use carving forks for pretty much everything as, as their, their right hand. Uh, now it's primarily used on buffets for carving. Uh, the skimmer. Used to have a chef used to say skim the skim with the skim the scum with the skimmer. Uh, a lot of times there's impurities that will float to the top of a stack um, that you don't want in your stack. So you take the skimmer. It's flat with perforated holes. You go underneath it gently. You wait a second or two and you lift it up and the impurities will get stuck on the uh, in, in, in between where the holes are and you can discard it. Uh, this 
the spider very different from a skimmer. The skimmer you want to take stuff off. The spider you want to take stuff out. Um, it's called the spider because this mesh part right here looks like a spider web. All right now, refresh your basket. Uh, it is a basket, round with a handle, used to go into a saucepan with water. And uh, when you're working on a hot line, you're going to cook your pasta in advance. You're going to cook. You're going to blanch and shock your vegetables in advance. And when the order comes in and you, and you need to put vegetables or you need to, to uh, refresh pasta, you'll jump it into the hot water. The, um, the basket will uh, hold the vegetables or the pasta in place, shake it off, put it in a saute pan, put it in a pan with uh, sauce, and away it goes. Tongs. Like I said before, the uh, chef's fork was uh, the big thing that the chefs used to use. It was their right hand. Now the big thing is tongs. Um, I never work in, on a hot line without a pair of tongs, good solid pair of tongs. Meat tenderizer. Um, oops, whoa, 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 whoa. Meat tenderizer. Um, on one side, you have a little bit uh, less of, of indentations. On the other side, you have big time indentations. I will use the flat side of the mallet first to, to flatten it out, and then I'll either use the, the big indentations if it's a big piece of meat such as a pork loin or a leg of a uh, veal, or the soft, the softer side if it's uh, chicken or something like that. All right, uh, strainers. Strainers are fantastic for straining really nice sauces, so you want to make sure you get all the, uh, the lumps out. And they're also great for uh, putting powdered sugar in, hold it above the product, and you just shake it, and the powdered sugar comes out sort of like snowflakes. Uh, chinois or a china cap. Uh, used to strain big things. The mesh is usually not as fine as the strainers, and um, use it for uh, stock pots, um, those kind of things that the liquid needs to go through quickly, and you're you're not worried about straining every little tiny morsel out. Uh, colander. Usually, I say to the kid, "Go give me a colander," and they look at me like I have four heads. I say, "You know, the bowl with holes in it. Great for washing vegetables. Great for rinsing things off." A food mill. Don't see this used a lot, but we do have one in our kitchen. I usually use it for mashed potatoes. These blades here can change out. Uh, this, this spring part comes out for cleaning and change out blades. There's a spring right here that pushes down. You put the product in, you crank the hand, and sort of like a, a, just like an old mill, it pushes the product through. You get potatoes that don't have any lumps. Right, box graters. Box graters are uh, what I was talking about a minute ago. If you have um, a lemon or a lime and you want to do the zest, you use this this side of the box. On the other side, there's a little bit finer of a grate. On the opposite side, there is a, a grate that has um, slicing capability. And on the opposite side, there is a grate that has a little bit bigger. Um, so it's great. This is a, a box grater is used for uh, shredded cheese or zesting or slicing, many different uses. It's got it's called the boss reader because it's got four different sides that all have different applications. A funnel, awesome for use for taking something in from a big container and putting it into a small container. Um, a pie divider, not a big fan of them, but uh, they are used in the kitchen. Uh, essentially what you do is you set it down and you score the pie. Then you have a guideline when you want to cut your pie. Pastry bags, oops, pastry bags. Uh, there are nylon cotton, cotton bags, nylon cotton bags that are reusable. They're not good forever, but they, they do last a good long time. And then you have plastic ones. Plastic ones are fabulous. If you're going on a road trip or, you know, you have to redecorate a cake when you get there, you can just throw it away on your way out. And they're good for uh, many different color. Uh, if you want to, if you want to write on cakes and stuff, you can put it in, you know, different colors in different bags, do your writing and, and store the store and not have to make it over and over and over. Pastry tips, um, inside the pastry bag at the very end, you'll cut the end off. The pastry pastry chip goes in the bottom of the bag and you can see it's shaped like a cone. Um, and every one of these tips has a different end on it. It, it uh, You control how the, pro the product comes out and this will make it be what you want it to be, whether you need it to be grass, whether you need it to be a rose petal, whether you, <clears throat> whether you just want to have a star the the tip helps you uh, make the design. Pastry brushes, fantastic for uh, before, during, and after uh, adding egg wash or <coughs> glaze of any kind. Bench scraper, fantastic for cutting dough as well as scraping the uh, the bench after the dough is kind of stuck to it, and uh, really good for um, 
for cleanup. Uh, bowl scraper, flexible, pliable. Um, they do. They go with the contour of the of the bowl, and you can get every last drop out. Uh, portion scales. Portion scales are used uh, when you want to have a specific amount. Let's say you're making meatballs. You want it to be a four ounce meatball. You put it on a scale here, and the red arrow will go to the four. The other thing that's nice about this is you can put something on here, like a small bowl, so you don't have product falling everywhere. And you, with this handle right here, you can adjust it to zero. So the bowl goes on. Let's say the bowl weighs two ounces. You move the arrow over to the two, and now it says zero, and then everything you add in gives you the ounces. Um, very common is a digital scale. You'll see them mostly in grocery stores. A um, little bit, a little bit more cumbersome in a kitchen. You have to have electricity. Um, it's harder to keep clean. A little bit easier. A little bit, a little bit more work than uh, the portion scale. Then we have the balance scale, also known as the Baker scale. And um, what happens here is this: these two, these two plates balance. And when you put this weight here on a zero, they should balance out perfectly. You have one through 16. So if you need three ounces of product, you move this over to where it says three. Um, this, let's say you put a cup on this side, you have to put the exact same cup on this side. You add your product in. And as you add your product in, the scales will level off. When the scale levels off, then you know you have exactly three ounces. All right. So you'll see we have the turtle, the counterweight, and the weights. And those are the next thing we're going to talk about. The turtle sits on the scale. And you put your, and it can hold up to seven to 10 pounds of flour inside the turtle. It's shaped like a bowl and it's oblong. So when you're done weighing your, your, uh, your product, you can easily go to the mixing bowl and dump it in. That's the reason why it's shaped the way it is. The counterweight, if you go back to here, the counterweight is the exact same weight as the turtle. And the whole purpose of it is that it offsets the weight. So like I said before, this goes 1 to 16. If I needed 3 ounces, I'm going to put a pan here and a pan here. The pans have to be exactly the same so it balances out. Well, the counterweight counter, counteracts the weight of the turtle, so it balances at zero. Once it balances at zero, then you can take and uh, adjust your, uh, your scale. These weights over here are added to the scale. So let's say you wanted to do 7 pounds, 4 ounces. You would take the weights, and the weights change in size to four um, ones, twos, fours, I've seen sevens. Uh, you put the weight on the scale and you change this over to four ounces. And then when you add the product, it will balance. And when it balances out, you know you have, you know, however much weight it is on the opposite side. So if you have 10 pounds, four ounces, and you have 10 pounds of weights over here, and this is moving over to four ounces and you add your product, when it balances, you have 10 pounds, four ounces of product. So again, the turtle and the counterweight, and then the weights just go on. Like I said, they go one, two, and four pounds. I've seen them as high as seven. And then you add those however much you need on the scale to make it balance. Uh, of course, you're gonna, after you mix it, you're gonna put it in, into, or if you see me, after you weigh it, scale it out, you're gonna put it into the mixer. This is the commercial mixer. This is a, a, a tabletop one. They make them as big as floor top ones. Uh, this one has a guard on it. Not all do. If you have a, a KitchenAid, it does not have a, 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 a safety guard on it. You have to make sure that you turn it completely off before you use it, uh, before you, you put your hand inside of it. Uh, there will be a whole other video just on mixers alone. Uh, but the attachments for the mixers, they have the whisk. Again, not a whip, a whisk. And it's used to uh, blend smooth ingredients smooth. You have the dough hook. Uh, it's shaped like a hook. That's why it's called that. Uh, trying to knead dough by hand can be time consuming and very, very taxing. Uh, the dough hook does a great job for you. And then the paddle. The paddle you're usually going to use, it's shaped like a paddle, you're usually going to use it to cream butter and sugar uh, to mix them together well without incorporating a lot of air. Measuring spoons, a uh, big thing that you have in big shops. Uh, key thing you need to know here is that you have to level it off flat smooth. Usually comes in one quarter, one half, and one teaspoon, and also one tablespoon sizes. Uh, spring form pan, usually for soft items. Uh, regular cake pan is just going to be like this with the, just a solid bottom. A uh, spring form pan has a bottom that is removable, and this part clamps onto it. 
with this uh, with this clasp right here. And then when you're done baking and it cools off, you can unclasp it and just lift it off. It's much easier for a softer product, so you can get it out of the pan much easier. Uh, pie pan, commercial regular pie pan, nothing special here. Uh, muffin pans used for cupcakes and muffins. Um, flan, or excuse me, a, a tart pan, I'm sorry, a tart pan. Uh, usually has a removable bottom, the same thing as, um, as the uh, springform pan. Uh, it's much easier to lift it from the bottom, take the take the uh, take the sides off. They come they can come straight or scalloped, and uh, usually it's a softer dough that you're going to use inside of these. Um, the, the loaf pan uh, usually used for breads, uh, a, lot, a lot of pound cakes, uh, meat loaf, that type of thing. Uh, the tube pan, usually this bottom part will lift out, same thing as before. You're going to use it for angel cakes and soft cakes. Uh, if it lifts out, it's much easier to take to, to remove from the pan. If it doesn't, a lot of times it gets stuck. Uh, stainless steel mixing bowls, fantastic for your mise en place and wonderful for mixing things together. Uh, measuring uh, uh, liquid measures. You want to make sure you're on a level surface when you're measuring with them. Uh, you can see on this side right here, they have lines so you can see what the, and it's a glass container. Not a big fan of glass in the kitchen. The plastic one use uh, works much better. Um, and on this side, you have stainless steel ones, or aluminum ones. Uh, these are divided into four sections. This is a gallon, and there's four quarts in the gallon. So every one of these lines represents one quart. So if you need a half a gallon, you just go to this line right here. This one is a cup. This one is a pint, and this one is a quart. There's four quarts in a pint. There's two pints in a quart. There's two cups in, in a pint, and there's four cups in a quart. Try measuring cups, same thing as measuring spoons. You want to make sure it's nice and level when you're measuring things out. You can't have it mounted up. It's more than a cup. <clears throat> ladles, a uh, big pet peeve that I have with ladles, people hold it like this. You should hold it like a pencil. So when you, when you scoop in, you can just turn your wrist to pour it, not to turn your whole body for it. And you can use this 8-ounce ladle as an 8-ounce cup if you need to, if you don't have any cups available. Uh, portion scoops or uh, spoodles. Um, they're great for portion sizes. They have ones that are perforated, ones that are solid, uh, great for buffet lines and great for uh, nursing homes, that kind of thing. So you can make sure you're giving the proper amount. And that leads us to ice cream scoops, which can also be used as portion cups. Um, they have different color handles and those different color handles represent different sizes. And so a lot of times we'll say, you know, half a cup is the gray handle, go find the gray handle cup. So you make sure you're giving everybody a half a cup. Uh, stock pots, they are usually twice as long as they are around, twice as high as they are around. A lot of them have a spigot in the bottom, so you don't have to lift it up when you're draining it off. Um, used for lots of liquid stocks, soups, that kind of thing. And this is a steam kettle. <clears throat> the, the, <clears throat> the product itself will, will, will conduct steam. The bowl itself is deep, and it has a thick layer. The steam is made in between. The outside will be warm, but the inside will be warm as well. And it also has a spigot at the very bottom for, so you can drain it out. Uh, rondo or a braising pan, just like a stock pot and the bottom, except it's short. It's uh, called a rondo from France. Not sure what that means, but the, uh, the braising part is what you're going to do when you braise is you're going to brown something. Let's say it's a, a, a pot roast. You're going to brown it off inside the pan. Then you're going to add your vegetables and add your stock. And you're bringing it to a boil, and then you're going to put it into the oven, put a lid on it, put it in the oven, and you're going to you're going to cook in the oven for a long period of time. Therefore, it can't be tall; it needs to be short. Saucepan used for many different things, primarily for sauces on top of on top of a range. Uh, saute pan, right? These are both saute pans. One has a straight side, one has a curved side. The curved side is so you can toss things without having to use a pair of tongs or a chef's fork. The other side is flat, and the sides are flat, straight up and down. And those are great for pan frying, uh, table, uh, uh, range top pan frying. Um, next one is a roasting pan, primarily used to uh, roast large items. Uh, you, you, there's also going to come up soon a roasting rack will fit right inside of there. Uh, the difference between baking and roasting, baking is in a uh, uh, heat in a confined area. Same with roasting, except roasting has a rack. The product is elevated above so the heat can go all the way around. Uh, so that's where the roasting rack comes in. Uh, next one is a sheet pan. 
Uh, sheet pan are used for many, many different things. Uh, they lay, you can lay items flat. You can use them for anything you possibly can imagine. Uh, they're also used for shelving and speed racks. And this is a speed rack. Uh, you can adjust them. You can you can leave spaces. You can do however you want to do. You can put um, all your mise en place prepped, ready to go on a speed rack. Put a plastic bag over the whole thing. It has wheels. And that can wheel into a dry storeroom or into a walk-in or into a freezer. Next one is a hot box. All right, there's a difference between a hot box and a proof box. All right, the hot box is strictly going to you're going to add hot air and it's going to hold things hot until you're ready to serve. You're going to cook it and you're going to hold it above 125 or excuse me 135, and that's primarily what that's for. The next one is the proof box. The proof box is going to automatically add steam. Uh, the idea is that you want a nice, moist, humid uh, area for your uh, your bread dough. Last thing you want to do before a yeast uh, is a fermentation, and you're going to use a proof box for that. Uh, hotel pans. Okay, so I put this photo in here so everybody can see what the photo, what I'm talking about when I'm talking about hotel pans. The next one is the full. Like, so we're all familiar with the steam table or a shaping dish. A full hotel pan is one that fits the entire shaping dish or the entire hole in the steam table. The difference is from here to here, this is a four inch full hotel pan. They come in fours, twos, and six inch hotel pans. The next slide shows that. Twos, fours, and six inch hotel pans. So if I tell you I want a full four inch hotel pan, I'm talking about this one right here in the middle. If you're confused, if you, if you go to a, a thing and you're not sure which one's which, smallest one is two, Middle one is four, the tall one is six, right? They also come in different sizes as far as, like I said, a full one fills a complete um, steam table. The half one only does half the steam, uh, only does half of that. A third will do a third of that. Um, a fourth does a fourth of that. A sixth, you have one for every, six of them to take up the thing. A ninth, you have nine of them to take up the whole full. All right. So if the chef says to you, go get me a six pan, he's talking about one of these ones and six of them would fill the, the thing. All right. Here's the roasting rack that I talked about earlier. It just simply either goes into a sheet pan or into a roasting pan. In the roasting pan, it's going to give elevation to the product so the air can go underneath. In a sheet pan, you might use it. Uh, say you just fried chicken and it's not quite cooked on the inside. You want to finish it in the oven. You can put it on, on, the, um, on the roasting rack and then put that right into the oven and it will it will, won't let all the, the grease and oil sit on the chicken or you can put baked items on it to cool off after they come out and you can sprinkle a, a glaze or put powdered sugar on them after you're done uh, mandolin mandolin is a uh, machine or, or a piece of equipment that you can use to slice make waffle cuts make uh, golf fruit cuts uh, make bat nets or juliennes or uh, many different items. Uh, it's it's very dangerous, and uh, you want to make sure you know what you're doing when you handle this. Uh, blender uh, used to blend foods and mix foods together. You can use it to make uh, sorbet or uh, soups, soups or sauces, whatever you want. Uh, food processor, same thing. Uh, used to chop, dice, shred, grate. Um, if you want to, if you want to get a good uh, tutorial on that, you can uh, watch my video on. Uh, Pineapple uh, Italian ice, uh, Swiss brazer or a tilt skillet. Uh, again, it's called the brazer. It's the same thing I talked about before. This from here to here is not very long. It's maybe 10 inches. Uh, you can brown your stuff. You can add your vegetables and you can add your liquid and turn it on low and simmer for a long period of time. It's also great if you have to make, you know, we have 800 students in the school and I have to make chili for 800. Uh, it's a nice big, huge saute pan basically or a big, huge pan that I can, that I can cook in. Um, it's also fantastic if you have a large function and you have to um, egg, uh, um, egg dip and saute chicken breasts. You can do many of them all at one time rather than do a, a, a ton of different cheap um, uh, uh, saute pans. One big Swiss brazier will do the trick. Uh, deep fat fryer. <clears throat> Just what it says. You put the product in the basket. You drop the basket down, submerges it in, uh, in uh, hot grease, and it cooks it completely submerged. All right, uh, the steamer. Um, 
the, you can see in the photo, you have this, the Swiss brazier, you have the stock pot or the, the, uh, um, the, the steam kettle, and then you have the, the, the steamers. The steamers, what it does is it creates steam inside of this box. You open up the handle, the hotel pans fit right inside of there, and the hotel pans come with uh, ones, perforated ones, that are made specifically for the steamer so the air can circulate through. Um, you just want to make sure that when you open the door, you don't step into that steam. Uh, it's a very, very hot. So uh, um, it's a very bad burn because it covers whatever it, whatever the steam hits, it burns. If I'm going to burn myself and I, I, I burn my finger, I burn my finger. If I stick my hand inside of a steamer, I'm going to steam my whole hand. Uh, these are combis. Uh, they can be a steamer and they can be a convection oven um, in, 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 in just a, a quick period of time. I worked at Swiss Hospitality Institute as an instructor. We would use it to steam our vegetables. And then when the entrees were going out, we would switch it over to convection bake. And then we put our baked Alaska in there and brown it up. You can also see in here, this is the hotel pan. Fits just inside there. Just like a regular steamer, it just slides on the, onto these shelves. And you can also see what I was just talking about, hotel pans that have the perforated um, uh, punctures holes in them. So those are made for steaming. Deck ovens, uh, perfect for pizzas, perfect for breads. Um, and they typically have a nice slab underneath here that keep it at one level temperature. Uh, convection ovens, regular, it's just like a regular oven, a plain oven, except for it has a fan in the back that circulates, circulates the air. Uh, gives you a more even cooking. It's not perfect, but it's better than a, a, a convection or a regular oven, um, conventional oven that has heat just coming from the bottom only, right? The next one, we're going to talk about the salamander, but I want to point out usually on a range where you're going to saute underneath, not always, but most times that's just a plain oven. Uh, heat from below, nothing more, no, uh, no air being uh, pushed around inside of there. The salamander is what's on top. That's what we're going to talk about. And it's usually used for finishing items, caramelizing, browning, glazing, or grilling. Um, usually uh, you want to melt cheese. Um, it's a broiler. Uh, essentially, it's a broiler. The heat's only from above, no heat from below. A regular broiler, a big one, is used for large pieces of meat, steaks, and that thing. This is used to finish stuff off. Buffalo chopper gets the name because it was invented in Buffalo and it was the original food processor. You put your product in the bowl, the bowl spins underneath this little hump right here. There's a, uh, uh, an S shaped blade and it chops the stuff up. A meat slicer, uh, used for meats and for cheeses. Uh, you want to essentially what it does is you put your hand and you go back and forth and it gives you nice, even, uh, slices of uh, meat and cheeses. Uh, can opener. Um, the, the blade goes up and down and or the handle goes up and down. There's a blade on this side that pops out. When the handle is straight up and down and you come down hard, it punctures into the can. Then you put the, ha the handle down and you go around in a circle and it takes the lid off of the can. <clears throat> can bro. All right. This is a uh, insulated food box that's, uh, that's used for both hot and cold food and you use it to transport food for off-property catering. Uh, guaranteed to hold the temperature for, uh, for a certain amount of time, but you can only lose one degree. So if you put something in there cold, uh, every hour you're gonna lose one degree. So you put something in there at 150 degrees hot, you know, every hour you're gonna lose, you have plenty of time before, you, before you're gonna get to the danger zone with your uh, hot health food. <clears throat> Shaping dishes, <coughs> non buffet. Um, you use the shaping dish to hold food hot. Usually this is the, the hotel pan would fit inside of here. And underneath that is a, a steam pan. So the pan underneath is where you put hot water. And down here is the sternos. The sternos are canned heat. You light the sterno. Sterno gets the hot, the water hot. You put your, uh, your hotel pan inside with your product and the steam will keep your, your product warm while it's on a buffet. All right, uh, this is the sterno. This is the canned heat. Comes with a lid. You pop the lid off. You light it up with with, with a, a lighter, and it'll burn for two hours. And you put that underneath your sterno. Uh, tabletop burner. These are great for pasta stations or omelet stations. Uh, inside of here is a little butane container, and it looks like this. It's just a can. It's also canned heat, um, but it has a little starter inside. So you click it, and it, and it burns. And it's just like having a little portable stove. Okay, 
uh, table skirts. On the buffet, you, you, you usually put a tablecloth down, but then you're going to put a skirt around the outside. The skirt has Velcro on the top part. Back in the day, we used to use pins, but now they have, everybody has uh, Velcro on it, and it makes your table look complete for your buffet. Uh, then you have the skirt clips. They're plastic. They have Velcro on one side, plastic on top and bottom. They're clear on the top, so it doesn't stick out. And then you can see this is the Velcro on the, on the skirt that clamps right to it. And that concludes the small equipment that you'll need to know working in the food service industry.